Good evening, Center Grove and everyone watching. We certainly do appreciate you tuning in on this evening for another edition of Wednesday Evening Bible Study. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I just trust that this word on this evening is going to bless your heart, bless your life. And thank you again for uh, tuning in. We've been talking about disciplines for disciples. And uh, we talked about prayer on the week before last. And uh, tonight we want to talk about discipline of meditation. Yes, God wants his children to meditate. And so that's what we intend to talk about on this evening. Thank you again for tuning in. It's good to be able to speak with you on this evening. Just three questions this evening and the lesson will be all yours. Number one, what exactly is meditation? Number two, why should we take time to meditate? And number three, how should we meditate? Those are three important questions. Number one, what is meditation? Number two, why should we meditate? And then number three, how should we meditate? What is meditation in the Bible? What is meditation in the Bible? What does the Bible say about meditation? Were there any in the Bible that meditated? Uh, should we meditate? If so, what should we meditate on? Well, to meditate is to contemplate on truth or reality already revealed. Let's meditate on God's Word. For example, the man after God's own heart is one who meditates on, number one, the Lord, Psalms 63 and verse number six. Number two, the Lord's wonderful works, Psalms 77 and verse number 12. And then the Lord's holy word, Psalms 119, verse number 15, also verse number 23. In the words of the Apostle Paul, when you read Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8, we are to meditate on certain things, things that are true, things that are noble, just, pure, things that are lovely, of good report, things that are of virtue, and things that are praiseworthy. Paul here in Philippians gives us some worthy things to meditate on. And so let us meditate on God's word. And we have so many examples of that in the Bible where God's children meditated on his word. Why should Christians meditate? Why should Christians meditate? Well, first of all, when we read Psalms 1 and verse 1 through 3 and Isaiah chapter 40, and verse 28 through 31, when we meditate on God's word, we find a source of joy and strength that we can't find anywhere else. No matter what you read, no matter what you do, you can't find this kind of joy and strength that you find when you're meditating on the word of God. I mean, when you can read about David and how he overcame his obstacles, when you can read about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, when you can read about the Apostle Paul, when you can read about the Lord himself, we get a, we receive a joy and a source of strength that we couldn't get anywhere else. When we read about what the Lord God has done for his children of old and understand that the Lord can do the same thing for us, we receive a joy and a strength that we can't get anywhere else. So Christians should meditate on God's word because there's a source of joy and strength. And then it's an important part of our transformation. The goal of the Christian is to become more like Jesus. Romans 8 and verse number 29. That's our goal is to become more like Jesus. That's why we are in Christ. We are in Christ or in the church to become more like Christ. And that's what it's all about. But this requires a transformation as we see in Romans 12 and verse 1 and 2. But notice that this is possible only by renewing our minds. Romans 12 and verse number two, our mind needs to be renewed every day. 
And this renewing is possible only when we set our minds on proper things. And the Bible teaches us in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 1 and 2 that we're to set our mind on things above and not on things on the earth. Remember, we want to be more like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. Only then when our minds are set on things above, will we be successful in completing the transformation, which includes putting off the old man and putting on the new man. Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2. Also Colossians 3 and verses 5 through 14 were to take off the old man, which represents, represents the way we used to live, the sinful lifestyle. And the new man represents the life in Christ Jesus. Let me give you this. Many fall because they meditate on the wrong things. They meditate on the wrong things. They mind the things of the flesh, and that leads to death and enmity with God, Romans 8, 5 through 8. And we don't want to be separated from God. You cannot be a spiritual person if you dwell on carnal-minded things. Cannot be a spiritual person when you dwell on carnal things. Dennis Waitley. Dennis Waitley, in an article entitled Seeds of Greatness, said recent studies conducted by a Stanford University research team have revealed that what we watch does have an effect on our imaginations, uh, imaginations rather, our learning patterns, and our behaviors. That's what we watch. That is what we watch. He says, first, we are exposed to new behaviors and characters. Next, we learn or acquire these new behaviors. The last and most crucial step is that we adopt these behaviors as our own. So we have to be careful what we watch and even who we hang out with because we are, it is possible to take on their behaviors. He said, one of the most critical aspects of human development that we need to understand is the influence of repeated, repeated viewing and repeated verbalizing in shaping our future. The information goes in harmlessly, almost unnoticed on a daily basis, but we don't react to it until later when we aren't able to realize the basis for our reactions. In other words, our value system is being formed without any conscious awareness on our part of what is happening. It is true, he says, you are what you watch and think. Think about this for a moment. If a 60-second commercial by repeated viewing can sell us a product, then isn't it possible for a 60-minute soap opera or smut come by repeated viewing to sell us a lifestyle? Yeah, that could happen. So fill your mind with positive and spiritual thoughts if you really want to do these two things Renew your mind and be transformed. So if you want to renew your mind and be transformed, fill your mind with positive and spiritual thoughts. That's what you have to do if you want to renew your mind and be transformed. Now, if Christians are to succeed, they must set their minds on the things of the spirit, on the things above where Christ is. Only then will they, with God's help, put off the old man and put on the new man. So just a few thoughts on the last point for this evening, how to meditate, how to meditate. How do we meditate? Well, this is good. This is really good right here. Find a quiet time, find a quiet time and not only a, a quiet time, but find a quiet place. When you look at Genesis 24 and verse 63, for Isaac, it was in the field at evening time. He found a quiet time and a, a place. For David, it was in bed during the night watches. Psalms 4 and 4, Psalms 63 and 6, etc., etc. It was a time and place free from distractions. So how do we meditate? Find a quiet place and find a quiet time. Nobody but you and Jesus. Contemplate something of value. If you want to meditate, contemplate something of value. David focused his meditation on three things. I'm going to give you these three things. 
In Psalm 63 and verse number six, he focused on the Lord himself. In Psalm 77 and verse number 12, he focused on the Lord's wonderful works. And then in Psalms 119, verse 15 and verse number 23, he focused on God's revealed word. Those are the three things that David focused on. So contemplate something of great value when you meditate. And then Paul mentioned things that possess virtue and are praiseworthy in Philippians chapter four and verse number eight. He said, whatever is noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, which include or could include uh, devotional writings by uninspired authors, a subject or object worthy of mindful contemplation. You can find something like that to read and meditate on. But, but let the Bible be your primary focus. Let what? The Bible be your primary focus. Read it every day. Psalms 1 and verse 2. Psalms 119 and verse number 15. Read the Bible every day. Read it every day. Put down that ebony and jet. Read the Bible. Turn that TV off and read the Bible. Hang up that phone and read the Bible. Before you close your eyes and fold your arms and go to sleep, read the Bible. Read it with a prayer in your heart. Psalms 119 and verse number 18. As you read, occasionally read it aloud to yourself. It doesn't hurt to read it aloud to yourself. The Hebrew word in Psalm 1-2 for meditation means to mutter. To mutter. Reading slowly and audibly helps to focus one's mind on the words. I know that works for me. As you read, you might ask yourself the following questions. Is there some truth I should know from this verse? How does this passage affect a previously held conviction of minds? Is there something I should stop doing in light of this verse? Is there a practice I should change? Is there a habit I ought to begin? You might end with a prayer such as David. That's what David would do when you read Psalms 119 and verse number 10. And so how do we meditate? We find a quiet place and find a quiet time. Number two, we contemplate something of great value. And number three, we let the Bible be our primary focus when we are meditating on the word of God. We need to meditate more. Just read the scriptures and meditate on it. Find yourself Place yourself within what you read and make sure that by examining yourself, you are where you need to be with the Lord. And that can come as you meditate on God's word. So Center Grove, I didn't have an extended long lesson on tonight, uh, but I just wanted to talk to you about disciplines of meditation. It is good to meditate. Christians should meditate on the word of God, meditate on good things, meditate on the word of God. And it will help us to be a better Christian today than we were on yesterday. So thank you again for tuning on. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys uh, Sunday. God bless you. Take care.